Danny, thank you so much for being here. My I pleasure. really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So when I think of a phenomenal black woman, right, I feel like you truly embody that with everything that you've been through, like your bounce game is incredible. You're radio host for Radio One's WKYS. Mm -hmm. You a recent author, Empathy and Eyebrows, yes. and your podcast that you just started. Would you say that you've always been like this motivated, self-driven hustler? Yes, I have to. Yeah, absolutely. Without a doubt. So I grew up in North Minneapolis with a lot of boys. My mom um, is legally blind. My mm. dad was not around growing up. And I watched my mom hustle all the time. She had three jobs, couldn't see much of anything. And she was just constantly working. And so I think that seeing her do that so much kind of just instilled that in me, like you always have to work. And when you come from nothing in order to get something, you know, you have to work hard. So for me, it was just like a given, like I have to work hard if I want anything. And so working hard is just, it's just a part of who I am, honestly. So how do you still work hard with everything that you mentioned from your past? You know, how do you still keep that same drive? I think honestly, it just comes down to um, wanting my kids to have better than I have and or ha better than I had and, you know, wanting to be, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I'm not cool with complacent, you know, yeah. like, I don't like being in one space and thinking, oh, this is it for me. I don't think anything is it for me. I don't think anything should be it for anybody, you know? So I feel like um, once I once I get some place, there's always another place that I wanna get to and I'm always wanting to create more and to do more. And so for me, there's just this natural drive and desire to keep going and to keep moving upward and onward. And, and it, it just is what it is, like I, it's just there. Yeah, I feel like you demonstrate that all the time about not being complacent because some like, some people could be like, okay, I'm host, a morning host, WKYS, yeah. like this is it. But you came out with the book, you came out with the podcast, so I, that's... And I don't know if you know this, but I'm the face of the TLC network. I didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes. I've so been... what does that mean? Like, what do you have so, to do? Um, You know how Sway used to do like MTV News? Yeah. So I come on in between all of TLC's big shows, you know, the Duggars or, um, you know, Little People, Big World. And I used to watch TLC all the time and oh, I stopped. So her. now I have to if, go back. Yes. Yeah, if you watch any bit of TLC, you'll see a whole lot of Danny. I just pop up all the time. Really? Yeah, yeah. I've been at TLC for three years. I love working for them. They're such good people. And it started off as something that was going to be really small and it turned into something huge. I've interviewed every single um, every single person on the TLC network. The Sister Wives, Cody and what? the Sister Wives, I interview everybody with That is door. amazing. Yeah. So do you ever have moments where you're like, dang, like I'm really doing all this? Yeah, all the time. I, I think that there there have been certain moments. I think interviewing like Ice Cube, mm -hmm. Will Smith, that was crazy. I saw that interview. Yes. Interviewing yeah. Will Smith was just like, like this is Will Smith, you know? <laughs> so I have moments like that. I think uh, another Another huge moment for me was when I did release the book okay because um, as much as I see myself as a mom and as much as I see myself as a woman you know or as somebody who just wants to keep moving and doing things I see myself as an author and a writer more than anything else and people wow. didn't know that about me you know because I had never put out a book I write a lot of blogs and things like that but for me that was that right there was like you did it you realized the biggest dream you've ever had and you did it and you did it well so that was huge for me. Wow. So your book and your podcast are now called, or not now, your podcast is now called Empathy and Eyebrows as well as your book. Yeah. What do you, like what was the inspiration behind that brand name? So Empathy and Eyebrows kind of happened as a joke. Um, I randomly wrote a Facebook status and said like, if I could pass on anything to my daughters, it would be empathy. And I said, I say that because if I say eyebrows, good eyebrows, it would seem shallow as yeah. hell. <laughs> But the truth is, um, I'm a very empathetic person and uh, I'm an empath. I feel everything, energy, mm -hmm. people. Like I know within two minutes of being around you, if, oh, I should have, if, I should, right, if I should be around you or not, I know instantly. Mm -hmm. Like I know good people, I know bad people. And so for me, empathy has always been a huge um, recurrent theme in my life. Um, and eyebrows, girl, I'm just obsessed You're with right. eyebrows. And so it kind they of look just, great. Thank you. It kind of just happened that way where it became empathy and eyebrows. And then once I decided to launch the podcast, it just made sense to connect the brands because yeah. branding is big and marketing is big. And when you when you own a brand like that, empathy and eyebrows belongs to me. I love it. I want it. And it, it forever will be something important in my life. So the it just made sense to have the podcast be kind of like an extension of the book. That's great. It's yeah. great that you have so much passion behind it because thank then you. it's not just, you know, you're doing just the work. Yeah. You know, it's something that you really love. Oh, I believe in it. Yeah, I mean, so much. that's so important. Thank you. Yeah. 
Um, your book is a memoir and you talk a lot about what happened in your marriage from you know infidelity to abuse and things like that. What do you think allowed you to be so open and honest when telling the story? Because you know that can be really hard for some people. Yeah, um, it can be hard for some people. It's never been hard for me. Like I don't know any other way. I've always been, people have always considered me an oversharer, but they've always said it like with the negativity, like, oh, she oversharer, she tells too much. But for me, that's always been who I am. Yeah. Like, I, I like to tell stories. I'm a storyteller. I like people who tell their truth because I think when you tell your truth, it allows other people, it like gives them permission to tell their stories. And so, um, you know, I wasn't, it just never was something I had to think about. I know that what I go through, if I talk about it, especially being in the position that I'm in, exactly. it can help people. That's what I was going to say. I was going to yeah. say, do you almost like feel a duty Absolutely. to tell your story? Absolutely. You know, I, this, there's a, you know, old saying, people say it all the time, like to, to whom much is given, much is required. And I just feel like I would be doing a major disservice if I didn't talk about things like postpartum depression, which I went through, yeah. infidelity in my marriage, which I went through. Um, just things, mental health, which I go through daily. All the time, So yeah. for me, it's like, I, it's a, I have to speak on those things because I think with me freeing myself, it also allows other people to free themselves. And I just feel like I have to do that. Have you had people come up to you and tell you how much you've helped them? Yes. And so for every, you know, I, what happens with social media, social media is crazy, right? Like it's a blessing and a curse. For every one person who says something just out of pocket, crazy about my children or about me or whatever online, there are hundreds of thousands of emails I've gotten from women who've struggled after they have their babies or who, from women who don't know how to leave an abusive husband and or, or things like that that make me realize okay you're doing the right thing you know like it doesn't matter these little bit of haters that come up and pop up there's so much good being done you got to keep telling your truth and letting other people tell theirs so i don't even know if i want to ask i'm such a like deep person Girl, when ask it... all the questions. i'm here for it ask them all do you feel like because sometimes i even think about this reflecting on my own life do you feel like you know you kind of went through these things so that like you were in the position to tell the story so that because you do have this voice, you do have this platform. Do you think, you know, yeah. somebody put this on you I do. to be able to help people? I think that, so for me, it's like when I hear, like if I, one of my, I, I call my, my squad of girls, my broad squad, mm -hmm. right? When a member of my broad squad hits us, hits up the group text and they're talking about this awful thing that they're going through. I feel bad, but then there's a part of me like, yes, just push through because at the end of this, something big is coming. And exactly. I'm a firm believer that through every, you know, trial and tribulation, there is all, it's always for something. Mm -hmm. It is building you up for something bigger and something better. And so, um, did I hate postpartum depression? Hell yes. Right. Did I want a stripper to be naked on my couch? Hell no. Right. right? But without those situations and without those things that happened to me, I would never be able to have the story that I have. Right. I couldn't have wrote that book without, you know. Exactly. Yeah, you, you just, you can't, if you don't live through experiences, you don't have a story anyway. Right. And so, yeah, some of that sucked. A lot of it sucked. But at the end of the day, I was able to um, conquer the things that I went through. And I had a story to tell afterwards. And that story has helped a lot of people. Yeah. So I'm, I'm okay with it. Exactly. And it turns you into the woman that you are right. now. And... and I'm proud of the woman that I am. Yeah. And I haven't always been able to say that, you know, like I feel so comfortable in my skin now, whereas for a really long time, I didn't feel comfortable. Right. I didn't own my melanin. I didn't own my, you know, just who I am. And now I do. And I think that all of those situations allowed me to get exactly. to this moment. Because I even like, I think about that, like with some of the things that I've been through, I'm like, it's so crazy. Like, you're like, dang, does it really have to be this horrible situation right. for you to wake up and be like, no, you are great. You yeah. are like this powerful. But some, that's how it works sometimes. Yeah. And it's a beautiful story in the end. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. So you started writing this book while you were in London. And you have said from that time, London became a really big part of oh, you. Oh, yeah. I what? got tattooed on my arm. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. It changed my life. So why do you say it changed your life? So I had this crazy love affair with London, right? It was make believe because I had never been to London. I didn't know much about London. Um, but ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to go to London. I just had this love for London. And I remember when the plane landed, I swear to you, I was like, okay, London, don't catfish me. Like, <laughs> I need you to be everything, everything that I need, like that I need you to be, that I want you to mm -hmm. be. And I got off the plane and London, let me just say, did not let me down. So I spent about 11 days in London. I spent six hours a day writing. So I would sightsee a little bit and then I would post up in a restaurant or I would post up in a library and I would just write. And okay. I would sightsee some more and I would take breaks and I would write. But 
what London showed me was that I'm not a twin individual. So I used to call myself a twin individual. Mm-hmm. Like I couldn't do anything without anybody else, whether that okay. was one of my siblings, my mama, my best friend, Claire. I just always, con- I'm, I'm a connector. So I, I just needed to be around people. When you spend 11 days by yourself in a different country, you learn more about yourself than you could ever possibly imagine. I feel like that's an experience. It was. Yeah. It was um, liberating. And especially coming off a crazy divorce, right? Mm -hmm. I just learned who I was and I felt a sense of freedom that I had never experienced in my entire life. And um, when you experience that type of freedom, you can't, nobody can lock you back up ever again. Like no matter what situation I'm in, no matter what job I get, no matter who I'm around, I have a level of freedom that I will protect with everything and London gave me that and that's why it was so important for me. Love it. Do you feel like it's anything specific about London itself or was it that you were you were able to go on this vacation by yourself for 11 days? I think it was just well London was beautiful Mm -hmm. and I loved the the setting but because I accomplished something so beautiful in London like starting the book and in fact I wound up going back to London a year later because I got writer's block and I'm like I can't finish how do I finish and I was like get your ass back on a plane go back to London wow so I hopped back on a plane went to London finished the book there you were um, able to finish it as soon as you went back I went back and it was just like things started pouring out of me again oh wow and so I know that London just holds a special place in my heart I'm going to the royal wedding just so you know oh yeah straight up, straight up. I said, Black Princess, I'm there. <laughs> so I'm going back to London. I'm going to probably start writing That's a special invite because there's a lot of people who oh, are saying, I like, invited. oh, you just going. I'm just crashing. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no invite. <laughs> no, I'm just going. I was about to say because a lot of people want that invite. No, I'm going to the royal wedding. <laughs> I didn't get the invite, but trust and believe I will be up in there. So, no, I'm going to London for the royal okay. wedding. Okay. I mean, I might not get in. Right. I'm but it's cheering. okay. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Um, Do you feel like you learned more about yourself while writing this book? Yes, I did. I think think that everyone else has called me strong for a really long Mm -hmm. time. And you know, you hear that and you're like, oh, thank you. And you kind of keep it moving. But after you write your own strength and the story, like the stories, right? I started retelling stories that I lived through, but never really told in that great a detail or anything like that but after the book and like after reading the whole book in its entirety even though I wrote it I was I was mind blown at my own strength Mm -hmm. I was like damn girl you have really been through it and look at where you are you know you're still standing you got two beautiful little humans they are so cute thank you so much oh my gosh and the thing is is that they're smart and they're compassionate and they care about the world and they're six and three okay so like I am doing right by them and that makes me proud. But yes, I feel like when I read the book, I, I learned my own strength. Mm-hmm. And that was something I had doubted for a really long time. I love that. Um, so about your podcast, Empathy yes. and Eyebrows, what can we expect? Like, what are you talking about? Expect the unexpected. <laughs> oh, God. So I just feel like we're so inundated with reality TV mm-hmm. and shenanigans and a lot of not authentic things, right? I don't want to do that. I want real people, exactly. real connections, real stories real life, what makes you angry, what makes you sad, What? when is the last time you scream, laugh so hard mm-hmm. that tears fell from your face. Okay. I want to talk about those things, the things that matter to people. And so the Empathy and Eyebrows podcast is literally going to be all real things. Got you it. You know, storytelling and heartbreak and what drives you, all these different things, but just real. I'm just over kind of all the the Kardashian exact so it won't be any gossip or anything like that on the I mean, podcast if, if, if there's a big enough story mm-hmm. that relates to women or to people and you can spin it in a way like how would this impact you or affect you yeah so like back like in, the new Drake song but okay, like the new Drake song <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Like the new Drake song. That can be a topic of discussion, but not gossip and yeah. salacious and not, 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 nothing like that. I want real conversations yeah. with real people. Got it. Mm-hmm. Love it. Um, so what type of like guests would you bring on? Are they going to be like your friends or? Yes. Okay. So my friends, um, just people in general. So if we're talking about mental health, I'd bring on some mental health advocates Got it. and, you know, mental people who know how to raise awareness about mental health. If we're talking about, um, you know, domestic violence, I would bring on people who know about domestic violence, people to tell their stories, but then also somebody who could help you get some help you know what I'm saying so just people from all different walks of life with all different stories we all have a story to tell and I'm so ready to hear everybody's story right like I had this idea a while ago and I'm thinking I might bring it back up but I wanted to have like coffee I don't even drink coffee but tea Mm -hmm. okay that would be me yeah I, I wanted to um 
do like 20 minute conversations with strangers. Just show up with a oh, perfect stranger dope. and ask them, you know, a bunch of different questions for mm -hmm. 20 minutes and re like real questions. And if, if you just are real about your answers, you don't have to fake nothing. Tell me the truth. I just think that those could be beautiful conversations. Exactly. And that's kind of And that would idea. show how like everybody's really connected. Like we mm -hmm. kind of have the same stories and yeah, stuff. Yeah, if, 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 at the end of the day, we all breathe. Yeah. Right. We, we have some commonalities that I think we forget a lot of the time because yeah. we all have different, you know, life journeys. But at the end of the day, we all breathe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's so great. Everything you went through, like literally turned into an empire it did like and i'm so excited about it because i think it's just the beginning honestly that's I so really do. like i feel it in my soul i really do like you can't go through all of that yeah and not have a blessing on the other side right <laughs> no know? seriously I'm, like, I'm waiting for the blessing right no see, that's why people always say like if you just push through it even mm -hmm. if it's as hard as it might seem like there is a rainbow There's there a, is a blessing happens. on the yeah. other side and then, you know little blessings have been happening yeah you know, my girls my my daughter's she's chronically sick but she's doing so much better almost in like a remission type oh that's thing. i met a good man after yes the crazy marriage that i had i have a good man in my life so they love you know, you it just, you accept these little blessings and you you're happy about them but you know i like i'm ready i'm yeah. ready for whatever the world has to throw my way i'm ready for it because mm -hmm. i know that there is always something better on the other side that's amazing i know so many people probably needed to hear that um so i was just talking to you earlier about the real world i went through your youtube videos <laughs> and i was like i don't think a lot of people know that you auditioned for the real world There's so much that people don't know i was on bradzilla yes i yes. was gonna talk about that too you're like a reality star no i'm not <laughs> I'm, I'm a retired reality star um yeah so i did i did audition for the real world i actually was the alternate for the dc um season which is crazy yeah I've been in dc forever right oh wow so, oh wait is that how you got out here no oh Oh, That's okay. What's crazy about it is I was a, I was the first alternate for the DC season, so that means they pick their cast, and then if somebody were to go home, it would be me. Somebody did wind up going home, but it was so late in the season that they were just like, "No, we're not going right. to do it." Right. Um, I was actually going to wind up hosting like their real world road road rules challenges. Yeah. But that fell through too. But everything happens for a reason because I wound up in DC a few years later working in morning shows, wound up with the TLC network, which is also out here. Right. So it just it just happens the way that it's is so to. crazy. And I was so crushed when I didn't make it. Were you I really? Wanted, I wanted to be You're, in the real world Y'all so have bad. to go and watch her audition tape. It's like the most entertaining thing it's I've crazy, ever seen. It's crazy, right? <laughs> I was so serious about <laughs> Follow me to pole dancing classes. They saw my blind mama on the tape. It was a mess. It was a mess. No, and I think it's so crazy, like knowing you now and then seeing the tape. Like I was such it was a baby. You I think were I was, I was like twenty four, maybe. You know, yeah, that's what it said. It said you were twenty four. Yeah, I was like twenty four. I'm thirty three. Oh my like, god. So, so what made you audition for the real world? I I just. I wanted to be on the real world. Yeah. I wanted the experience. I had been in Minneapolis my whole entire life. I wanted something different. Um, you know, I it was just something that I wanted to do. And I went I went out to Chicago for the uh, the audition, made it to finals, went out to LA. They make you sit in like a four hour intensive oh, wow. like, therapy session to make sure you're not crazy to which I am a little crazy. Right, right, right. That's probably why I didn't make it, but <laughs> No, but they make you sit through all these tests and all, the, all these They things. have some crazy people they on do. there, they though. So crazy. I'm trying to see crazy. how they pass those tests. They want crazy. <laughs> but, yeah, it, I mean, it was it was really interesting. I'm glad I didn't make it, though, because, you know, everything has, like, a, a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. And had I made the real world, I probably wouldn't have wound up in D.C. years later. Probably wouldn't have met exactly. you know, the men that I've met and things like that. And, and I think everything really happens yeah. for a reason. Yeah. So how did you like being on Bridezilla's and Marriage Boot Camp? So Bridezilla's was a hot damn mess, mm -hmm. like straight up. Um, I don't know how people who are actually like that survive because being that person for, we filmed for like nine days. Being that person for nine days was one of the worst experiences of my life. Mm. Like the inner, like putting out that type of energy into the really? world is exhausting. Yeah. Like I realized it takes so much more effort to be a jackass than it does to be a good person. So how do the people like on Love & Hip Hop, how do they do it forever? They I, do it for so many seasons. I think some of the people on Love & Hip Hop really are like that. Yeah, though. You know what I'm saying? That's real. Like, I don't think that, I think Bridezilla's is just all shenanigans. Okay. I really do. Marriage Boot Camp, on the other hand, though, I loved. You did? I loved it because, one, I got to really be myself. And I told them when I signed up, I said, I ain't giving you that Bridezilla okay. craziness. Okay. So like, Bridezilla was, like, kind of fake. Oh, it was all Like, all It fake. was a hot damn Okay. Night. Yes. It was, there was, it was just, I mean, they literally kept stopping taping and they're going, this is not 
funniest brides. This oh, is bride wow. Like, to, and I was like, look, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I got to be who I am. Oh, and wow. I find myself funny, so <laughs> I might make a joke, you know. But boot camp actually changed my life. It helped me become a better person. Also helped me make the decision to make my to get my divorce once I came home and realized, like, we went through marriage boot camp. We went through this whole thing. And you still acting like this? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, this ain't gonna work out. Mm-hmm. So it was it was a really good experience for me. That's dope. So would you want to be on any reality show now? I don't think so. No. It would have to be um, total opposite. Like, I don't want to be, I don't want, I'm done with the shenanigans. You know, I was really young when I did that. I, I got married at 26, so Bridezilla's happened at 26. And that seems like a lifetime ago. And the decisions I made back then, I would never make those same decisions now. I'm um, glad I did and glad I wound up where I am, but... It would have to be a really good show, like yeah. a show about, you know, strong black women. Exactly. Raising their kids on their own and building empires. Because I'm not trying to do no crazy shenanigans. Show. Yeah. Like, that's just not I'm I don't have the energy. It has to be positive. It does. All things. positive. Yeah. I'm not I'm not doing that other stuff anymore. Speaking of positive, you have this amazing morning show, mm-hmm. Bam in the Morning. How do you love being the host of one of the top morning shows? I love it. Like radio has been. I say it's like my first love because it really, really is. I started in radio when I was 19 years old. My entire adult life has played out over the air. Marriage, babies, infidelity, divorce, more babies, like all these things. I grew up on the radio, Mm -hmm. 19 years old, you know. And so um, to be in the place that I consider home now, DMV, and to be in morning radio, it's just, it's a blessing. Like, I love it. And to get paid to do what you love to do, talk to people, connect with people, there's nothing better than that. I think about that even with my job. I'm like, you know, it means so much to be so passionate and to love what you do. Because, like, when I go out and do stuff, like, in the field or interview people and stuff, I'm like, this is, like, nothing to me, you know, because I love it. it. And then I'm like, I get money. (laughs) Like, you enjoy it, you know. So, like, when when you do what you enjoy, it doesn't even feel like work. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I will say that I don't know how much longer um, I can give so much of myself mm. to so many people. Yeah. Um, because, like I said, it's been almost 15 years. Wow. Growing up in a very public space, you know, and that has done a lot to my mental health and to my family. Mm-hmm. And so um, I'm in this weird position where it's like, how do you unbecome yourself? Right. You know, like, how is that possible? And then how do you take back what you've given to so many people. Exactly. Just kidding, guys. I don't get no more, you know. So, so you would want to, like, leave radio and then do, like. I don't do know like... what it means. Okay. I don't know what it means. I just know that um, I feel a shift. Mm-hmm. I don't know exactly what that looks like or, or what that means for me or my future. But I know when I feel the way that I feel to pay attention. I was just about to say that. You got to follow you the gotta, instincts. You got to follow the instincts and the intuition. And so right now, I don't know what it means. I can feel it. And I'm starting to, I'm listening. That's good. Because I'm very good at feeling things and being like, not today. <laughs> not right now. We're going to work through this later. But, you know, right now I feel it. And I'm like, okay, you have to pay attention. And, and what does this look like for your future, for your family, for the relationship that you're building? Because I'm going to marry this man. Right. Girl. Oh, yes. He's a good man. He is a I'm good so man. happy for Thank you. You. So, you know, I'm just trying to fill it out and, and decide where I want to be, but being my own boss sounds really good. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. I think that's the move. Mm-hmm. Um, so, knowing what you do today, what advice would you have given to yourself? So, let me just preface this. I usually end the interviews by just, you know, asking the guests to give advice on their past self, like a part of their past self. Yeah. So, for me, To you, it's what would you have given to yourself when you were at the core of the problems in your past marriage? What advice would you give yourself? Um, I would have told myself that you are far stronger than you know, and that will reveal itself in time, but also to never let anybody dim your light the way that you have allowed. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's crazy because... um, the man that I'm with now, Jeff, that's his name, the man that I'm with, um, my partner, I don't even know if he treats me exceptionally well. I just think I may have had my bar really low previously. Now, he does treat me yeah. extremely well, but when you get a man who treats you well after dealing with everything you've dealt with, you will realize really quickly how little you expected of other people. And that's amazing to me. So yeah. I, I would have told myself, like, one, raise your bar because this right here ain't it. 
Like I think so many women would say that too. Raise your Look, bar. we got people like, in the back. Yes. yes. Raise your bar. Why are you allowing the things that you're allowing? Why are you tolerating this? And baby girl, if 22 people tell you something, believe Oh them. my gosh. Stop yes. It. Keep doing what they're saying. Keep it moving. <laughs> Okay, like that, that is, is so real. I'm that's serious. so true. So, you know, I'm definitely you're stronger than you know. I love that, it. That's really what it comes down to. I love it. Well, thank you so much, yes. Danny, for joining me. I love this conversation. I appreciate you being I appreciate here. You. Thank, thank you. you. No problem. <laughs>